Hi, my name is Wendy Myers. I am a health and nutrition coach in Los Angeles, California. Today I want to talk to you about the medicinal benefits of Manuka honey. I love Manuka honey and I just was so happy when I discovered this and was really blown away by all the health benefits it confers. Manuka honey is antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. And it has the ability to kill any bacteria it comes into contact with. It can even kill MRSA, the dreaded uh, antibiotic resistant superbug or the flesh eating superbug, as it's also known. So if uh, if honey can, this honey can kill MRSA, it can kill a lot of uh, a lot of bacteria and illnesses that plague your health from time to time. Now, the manuka honey comes from the tea tree bush, uh, also called the manuka bush. But it's not the same bush that tea tree oil comes from. It's a different bush, but it produces this really uh, medicinal honey. And this honey, this honey works in many different ways. It has six different methods by which it kills bacteria. One of them, it has a very high pH level of 3.5, so that uh, definitely kills bacteria. Um, it has MGO. It's um, I forget the ex exact words that that stands for, but this MGO factor is uh, definitely what kills bacteria. Something that it's it's the rating system of honey. It's called the uh, Manuka. Let me look it up here. It's called the um, uh, methyl glycoxyl. Me methyl glyoxal, that's what it's called. It's an antibacterial compound and it determines the level of antibacterial activity in the honey. So typically you'll see a rating on honey from 5, 10, 15, 20, even 25 and up, rarely. That's extremely rare honeys, but that uh, clues you into the antibacterial level of the honey. Um, so I'll go back to some of the ways that it works. Um, another way that it works, it actually contains hydrogen peroxide. Um, strangely, there's some enzymes the bees put into the honey. Um, they, they put some water and enzymes, and that creates hydrogen peroxide in the honey. Um, additionally, uh, there's a very, very low water content because there's so much sugar in the honey. And so the sugar, uh, you know, the, there's just no way that bacteria can grow or survive in the honey because of the high sugar content. Um, additionally, um, one of the th components of Manuka honey is called Bee Defensive One. It's a protein that's found in royal bee jelly that's fed to the queen of the hive, and it has very strong antibacterial properties. Um, additionally, and the, the number one reason that Manuka honey works so well is because it dehydrates, it sucks the water out of any bacteria or virus it runs into, and no bacteria can survive. That's why there has been no recorded bacteria to date that has been able to resist or become resistant to Manuka honey because of this very special way that it kills bacteria and viruses. Um, now some of the health benefits of Manuka honey, um, like I said, it kills MRSA, so it has lots of, um, lots of uses to kill household bugs, uh, namely colds and flu. It's wonderful for killing all of the bacteria in your throat. It's a cough suppressant. It can suppress coughs really, really well. Um, it can work for b burns and bed sores, uh, bed sores and things that have been resistant to antibiotic treatment. You can apply it topically to these. It's a wonderful wound dressing, and you can find many um, wound dressings by Comvita and so, some other uh, Manuka Med where these uh, the bandages have ar already have the Manuka honey inside them. Um, it can also work for eczema, and psoriasis, and rosacea, any kind of skin disorder or bacterial infection on the skin. Um, it works great for injuries, like abrasions and cuts and whatnot to prevent those from becoming infected. Um, it works great for H. pylori infections. I discovered I had an H. pylori infection about a year ago. I took Manuka honey for three months and I effectively killed uh, the H. pylori in my stomach. H. pylori is uh, very scary, about 50% of people have it and it can in the right conditions create, uh, and if it's the right uh, strain, it can cause stomach uh, cancer. So it's a you know great way to remedy that very easily without antibiotics. Um, it can also be really good for IBS and irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, diarrhea, any condition where you have a dysbiosis of the gut bacteria in your intestines, and the Manuka honey will go in there and kill the bad while uh, keeping the good, the good probiotics in you. And it also works great for any kind of uh, disorder of the, the in, you know, digestive system, like if you have uh, GERD, gastroesophageal uh, reflux disease, um, if you have heartburn, um, or if you have gastritis or any kind of indis indigestion, it works fantastic for getting your digestion in better working order so you don't suffer from those common ailments.
Um, it also works well for um, for controlling cancer. It can, actually has been shown in studies to control cancer growth and metastasis of the, the, the cancer, uh, where the cancer can travel to other areas of body. It reduces the incidence of that. And it can also be effective in relieving the symptoms of chemotherapy and radiation. Now let's go into the Manuka rating systems. These are really, really confusing and um, companies keep coming up with new ways to rate their honeys and get around the, the rating system. So we're going to clarify all that right now. The two rating systems that you want to look for are UMF, uh, MGO, and um, uh, MS, uh, MGS. These are the only ones that you want to bother with. The other ones, forget them. They're not controlled enough. Um, to really, so you really don't know what's in the honey, and this honey is so expensive. It's like thirty to, you know, even a hundred dollars a jar. So you want to make sure that you're buying a honey has the antimicrobial activity in it that the label states. So let's get into the first one. It is uh, what you'll see on the, the honey label is the numbers, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, even up to thirty. Um, this, like I said before. Uh, denotes the antimicrobial activity in the honey. However, you need um, a honey of 10 plus or above for it to confer the benefits of the honey, uh, the benefits of the honey that I just talked about. So you have to get 10 plus or above. 15 plus is the best for, you know, severe illness and chronic infections and whatnot. Some think 20 plus is like overkill, so it may not be necessary for the extra expense. Um, you'll also see words like activity or activity, bioactive or bioactivity, um, AAH, NPA, TA. Just forget those. Again, you just don't know what's inside the honey because there's not a um, there's not a, enough of a certification process or a, a board overseeing the certifications. So you just don't know if what's in the honey is what you're getting. And you can really tell by the price point, you're not going to get Manuka honey for $20 a jar. Just It just doesn't exist. This is a very rare honey, and the higher you go the number, uh, 20 and above, it gets incrementally more expensive. So you just you get what you pay for. Um, so let's go on to the UMF rating. The UMF rating is the, the most common rating that you're going to see, and it stands for Unique Manuka Factor. That's the unique property in the honey that, uh, you know, show, that's the uh, methyl glyoxal content that is in the honey. And so there's a, definitely a board overseeing this. And when you see a UMF on the label, that honey producer has been required to test every single batch of honey prior to giving its rating of 5, 10, 15, or 20, or whatnot. So that's a, a good honey to get. Um, the best one, the best rating has the most sophisticated rating system is MGS. It's called Mullen Gold Standard. There's only one honey that has a standard. It's Watson and Sons, and that's the only kind that I buy. Um, the guy Mullen, uh, Professor Mullen, he's the founder of uh, Bioactive Honey, and he he discovered the Manuka factor in honey, and he's a, a authority on Manuka honey research. So he came up with a the newest and best way to test the honey, to because there's cause many you know problems with uh, testing methods, and some testing methods have been found to not really accurately uh, find the actual bioactivity of the honey, the antibacterial activity of the honey. So the MGS standard has been shown to be the most accurate. So why not just go with the, the most accurate method? Um, some recommended honeys, like I mentioned, are Watson and Sons. Um, I love them. Um, their their honey is fantastic, and it comes in a pretty little jar too. <laughs> um, you can also get Manuka Health uh, New Zealand honey. Um, Hadril is a Cambridge uh, UMF 16 plus. That's a good one. Comvita honeys and HD H uh, N Z. Honey is also a really good one, and if you look on my blog, Manuka Honey on liveto110.com, liveto110.com, I have links to all these uh, recommended honeys. Now, the dosage that you need is, if you just want to enhance your immunity, you can just do uh, one teaspoon daily. Um, that's I think that's about 10, uh, 10 milligrams of honey a day. Um, if you have digestive upset or infections, uh, you can do one to three teaspoons a day of 16 plus. Um, if you have topically, you can apply uh, uh, MGS 20 plus 
um, or higher activity every 12 hours, so change the dressing every 12 hours. With 20 plus, you need it a little bit stronger than you do internally. And uh, for rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, or any kind of problem like that, apply the honey to the affected area and leave on for about an hour a day, and that should do it. Um, so <clears throat> I hope this is informative for you and it clear, clarified any um, questions you had about Manuka honey and this uh, miracle product. It's fantastic, and it's part of my medicine cabinet, so make it yours too. Thank you so much.